Who's going to be at that table? Children, youth, young people. Because they see the world differently. My name is Larry L. Simmons Sr. I am a 77-year-old man. I have been educated in the city of Detroit my, almost my entire life. Education opens the window of the minds of anybody who experiences it. And that is when you look at the same thing and see something different, which is the definition of creativity. That's what the Brightmore Alliance is trying to do, is to unleash the creative energy that is in communities that are too often ignored. I'm the executive director. Uh, I began as a board member. Uh, the Brightmore Alliance has evolved a, a model for our work, and that is building abundant food, shelter, clothing, and both. Six words. That can't happen without education. When we started doing this work, it started because we saw kids walking up and down Burke Road. <laughs> and so our first plan, uh, me and the other members of the Brightmore Alliance, we said, what can the community do about school performance? We said, well, kids got to be there to get it. And we said, let's deal with attendance because parents have more control over that. So our first solution was, Go back to the minister, say, look, we need you to use your buses and we're gonna drive kids to school who are absent. Two things happened. First, we got the numbers about how many kids were at school. And it was like 75% of the kids were missing school. The other, the other thing was what we heard when we would pick the kids up. And after they had ridden with you enough, back and forth to school. They began to get comfortable. They would talk to each other. We called it the backseat conversation. The people next door started fighting and somebody got shot. We're about to be evicted. We don't have any place to live. All of our, I came home from school yesterday and all my stuff was in the front half. That was our first clue that this absence that we thought parents could solve alone had deeper roots. And so we start trying different ways to work with the school. In those days, we were getting serious pushback. People did not want to hear about chronic absence. It was actually skilled um, who heard what we were saying and realized that we were on to something, that the community had gotten ahead of education. And we were, in fact, pushing something that the rest of the institution of education needed to attend to. Uh, they invited us to be part of the Coalition for the Future of Detroit School Children. That coalition elevated chronic absence as its number one priority. Uh, they supported us as we went to the state, pushed back, pushed back, pushed back in the snow and ice. We, the, the students and parents marched from Detroit to Lansing over three issues. Return the elected school board, make chronic absence the number one priority, and resolve the debt of Detroit school. And we got all of them. Chronic absence became central because parents looked off their porch, pastors looked off their porch. Both of us saw kids who should have been in school but weren't, and we came together and organized educated ourselves on the issue and then began a relentless push to make it a primary public policy issue. We can find a way to convey the urgency and the immediacy to address the things that are troubling us. And I believe we will because we always do in every age. Every generation had this language. 